nicknamed the happiest animal in the world, the quokka is truly a unique Australian gem. The small marsupials are native to Rottnest Island, where majority of their population resides today. With an estimated 8 to 12,000 living on Rottnest Island, only a few other small populations exist on mainland Western Australia and also some other islands close by to Rottnest. While some small populations do still live on the mainland, human establishment has pushed the majority of the population to Rottnest Island. Aside from in zoos, these critters are not found anywhere else in the world. History tells us that quokkas are the first animals international explorers came across when they encountered Australia. They were the first animals to be recorded by European travellers who initially thought they were large rats. It was in the early 1600s that Dutch sailors came past, saw the quokkas and decided to name the island Rottenest, meaning rat's nest in Dutch. From then to now, quokkas have become an Australian icon for Western Australia and Rottenest Island in particular. From supposed giant rat to now what's known as the most friendly creature in the world, quokkas have become a high tourism point. They've gone from zero human interaction to daily human encounters, and quite happily as well. While the island provides vast land for natural habitat, the quokkas aren't afraid to roam around the established areas of the island too, and mingle with humans. They might not be domesticated to the point of wearing a collar like this girl here, but they are extremely content with human interaction. In fact, they have an extremely high human interaction rate for something that is still actually considered a wild animal. You don't even have to approach these animals, they'll approach you. Their friendliness has done wonders for island tourism. In 2012, the Huffington Post featured an article featuring quokkas, showing many of what has become the famous quokka selfie. Since the release of this article, the island has experienced an increased tourism rate of 20%. Marketing experts tracked the use of the hashtag Quokka Selfie and it was estimated to have reached a whopping 670 million people last year alone. Now, they're one of the most well-known animals on social media, says Holly Knight from the Rottnest Island Authority. It's estimated that $6.2 million would have to be spent on advertising to match that amount of reach. So they're a draw card for tourists, they've interacted increasingly with humans and the cycle continues on. But while they may seem abundant on the island, they are in fact a vulnerable species. So we do need to take the utmost care in preserving their population. It is unfortunate to say that not all tourists to the island display the utmost care and love towards quokkas. Multiple reports of animal cruelty have emerged in past years. Some cases have included a man attempting to set a quokka alive, another including a man kicking a quokka against a wall. So why is it that some people display such disgraceful behaviour towards quokkas while others travel the world just to take a photo with them? This really highlights differences in cultural values in regards to respect for animals, especially native wildlife. It is unfortunate that some people hold the importance of respect to animals at such a low level. The tourists found guilty of setting a quokka alight were from France. Could it be possible that in their home country a lower importance is placed on animal respect? Perhaps they have fewer native animals and there isn't as much of a culture for respect and preservation. Whereas here in Australia, we have a large number of native species, many of which are threatened in some way or another. Maybe we grow up surrounded by a cultural awareness of the importance of wildlife and its preservation. Whereas maybe in some other countries, this isn't so important. In less extreme cases than the ones mentioned before, tourists are harming quokkas and giving them the incorrect food. Quokkas are herbivores, meaning they must eat shrubs and grasses from the island. Highly processed human foods, however, are not suitable for them. When tourists feed the animals items such as chips or bread, they not only do not satisfy the nutritional requirements for a quokka, but they can also result in dehydration. These unnatural foods can prevent the animal from receiving the water it needs through food. Much of the island's water sources are salty from the ocean, so they're not suitable for drinking for the quokka. So the quokkas largely rely on water from the leaves and greens that they eat. In some cases, dehydration and malnourishment can lead to skin conditions in the quokkas. So it's these kind of negative interactions that can pose huge threats to the future of the species. And while there is veterinary care for those whose health is deteriorating, prevention is the best cure. Tourists are specifically asked not to touch, handle or incorrectly feed the quokkas on the island. It is in fact illegal for any tourist to handle the quokkas or give them any unnatural food. Punishment can include a $300 fine on the spot. So we can easily threaten them, but do they threaten us? 
In most cases, the answer is no. Corkers are known to be mostly trusting and friendly towards humans, but it is important to remember that they are in a wild animal and they will act out on natural instincts at times, especially to protect themselves. So just how sustainable is the quokka, and in particular our relationship with them? It is important to realise the significance that quokkas have in the idea of human-animal relationships. They're really one of the only wild animals in the world that humans can so easily have a friendly interaction with. This really highlights the importance of the preservation of these species, to uphold it, keep it alive and well, and to keep this special connection going. As we've seen, interaction is extremely easy and very personal, but in some cases this can pose a threat to the species, whether through intentional mistreatment or something as simple as providing incorrect nutrition. The future of both the quokka and our relationship with them is really in our hands. They are vulnerable and it is our place to ensure their population stays healthy and steady. If we treat them with respect and care for them, there's no reason why we can't keep upholding this special human-animal connection that we can find in the quokka.